Well, good morning, everyone. Let's take our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter number 1, verses 3 and 4. Uh, for promise number 269. And let's just dive right in and say this. This is the promise. You have an everlasting inheritance reserved for you in heaven. We have a an everlasting inheritance reserved for us in heaven. First uh, Peter 1, 3 and 4 says this. says, Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. Now, obviously, this is for the believer. And uh, yesterday we, we talked about the reality that many people who claim uh, to believe don't desire to please God. God as their primary motivation uh, for life. Uh, most are still living for the same things they did before they even were introduced to Jesus. And so they're really busy. They've got a lot going on because they're still trying to accomplish everything this world tells us we're supposed to accomplish to be successful, to matter, to, to have a genuine purpose. And so we're chasing our dreams and, and trying to get trophies and all this stuff in this world that's all going to burn. But we have an inheritance waiting for us in heaven, which makes doing the Lord's work that much more appealing if you actually know Jesus the way you ought to. See, the reality of what we have in Christ, if we know Jesus, is an everlasting inheritance. This is what we have in him. Anything that you gain here on this earth is going to burn. There is no treasure that you can amass. There's no fame. There's no name and lights that will translate into eternity unless it's God praising you for your efforts to further his kingdom. Do you understand that? I mean, we can get the, the multi-million dollar contract. We could be the name in everybody's minds because we hold the record. Now, we could be all these various things and still have made really no impact on the world for the cause of Christ. It's hard to believe that we would take this unbelievable and completely undeserved gift and really just toss it on the shelf with all the other stuff we've collected over the years. And that's what many believers do today. And that's scary because that might mean that that you're not actually a believer. If, if you can just take what God has done for you and just toss it on the shelf and go pursue a different life, that might mean that you've never really met the, the God of the universe. I mean, the stuff that he's saying that we have in him and that what genuine believers do. See, the, see, the hope we have is supposed to breathe an excited hope into, uh, into us as we live out our new life, not as we continue to pursue the old life with just some soap on it to clean it up a little bit. We have a whole different line of thinking. We have a whole different uh, opportunity to live in a different way because we don't have to prove ourselves to people here. We live our lives for him, the one that's given us an inheritance in him that this world's decay cannot touch. It's there waiting for us. And so the hope we have is supposed to breathe an excited hope into us. See, the high price Jesus paid for us, if we really do have salvation, should inspire a whole new way of living, one that centers on Jesus instead of us. So you just have to ask yourself this question, is my, are my pursuits in life about me? Are they about human accomplishment and achievement? Do they somehow make me feel important or better? Then, then, then you have to ask yourself, if that's what you're pursuing, you can't pursue uh, living for Christ at the same time you're pursuing living for yourself. And so ask yourself those questions. Am I living for me or am I living for him? And you can tell by what you pursue and who's getting the praise and glory for the accomplishments. And this is really hard for people to believe. And I, I think that oftentimes I get tuned out because I feel like a broken record on this subject of actually choosing to live for Christ. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6.33 that we're to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto us. We add all the things and then expect God to bless it. Let's reverse that and see what kind of impact it makes on our lives and on the lives of those we care about. Have a great day.